Man, I feel like I've been at a pun casino recently, just racking them in. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. As you can see, my wall is finally full. Uh, I've been planning this out and figuring out what I can fit in what space and how it all comes together. And over the last couple months, I've been building out these racks and storage shelves and tills so that now everything is within reach. So I'm working at the bench here. All I have to do is turn around and I can grab the saw that I need and get right back to work. Or I can turn around and I can grab the plane that I need and get right back to work. And then when I'm done with it, I just turn around and put away my feet don't even move. I'm loving this because everything is within the reach. Um, a lot of people have been asking why I didn't build a tool cabinet. That's because I have no reason to lock things up. Uh, originally tool cabinets were made so that the workmen could lock up their tools at night because multiple uh, workers would be in the same space. But I didn't need that. So today we're actually working on this rack over here and it is for files and screwdrivers and other long handled items. I thought about building one with chisels as well, but I want my chisels to be separate over here. Uh, so this is something I've been trying to figure out for a long time. Um, I have a ton of files and I want to have a place to put them. I don't want them rubbing on metal or magnets and this is what I finally came up with. And lo and behold, it was also great for screwdrivers. <laughs> so this rack is fantastic and I've got a lot more space to grow on it. Um, just to let you know, it's basically just like a, a cantilever system. So these bars running across the front, the, the piece sits on there, and then the toe of whatever the tool runs runs down into a French cleat, or half of them it runs down into a dowel that I put across this. I'll explain it a little bit more as we get into it, but it's just kind of a, a simple way of holding all the tools, and anytime I can reach over, I can grab a tool, and I can put it back. So let's take a look at how to make this, and uh, jump into it. For this project, I kind of wanted to figure this out off the top of my head, but I did need to get some of the dimensions and sizes down on a, well, a scrap piece of wood so that I could kind of lay it out and see how everything would fit. Um, I laid out on this board where the French cleats are and then where I want the horizontal bars to go and how all these can sit. And so once I had that all figured out, I could find out what the angle that each of these would then be at off of the wall and I could set my bevel gauge to that and then kind of use this as my template for everything else. So the next thing I need to do is actually make the verticals and I'm making these out of some white oak that is about three inches by a little over three quarter. I uh, really don't care what it is, it's just scrap I had left in the shop from another project. But I can then cut them all to length. Um, on the first one I didn't care what the length was, I just needed it to be to fit in the space. So it ended up being a little over 30 inches, just something about that long. <laughs> then I needed to make the second vertical the exact same length. And so rather than measuring it out and then laying out the length, I can just put the board on there, make a mark, and that mark can then be what I then cut off of. And uh, transfer that mark around the board, cut it down, and I now have two boards that are exactly the same length. These will be the verticals running up either side of this rack. So the next item I need to do is figure out where all of these French cleats intersect these verticals. So I put the board on there, and then with a marking knife, mark out the tops of each of the French cleat. I'm not worrying about the bottom because I'm going to leave a little bit more space in the bottom so that this can slide on as opposed to sliding on from the end. And uh, once I have all these marked out, then I can take it back to the bench and transfer all those marks around the top and put in a stop a depth mark. And now I can cut out each of those French cleat intersections. Um, to do this, I'm just going to use a saw and cut down on both sides. One side is 90 degrees and the other one is at whatever that angle is on the French cleat. Then I can come back in with a chisel and knock out the waste. I really enjoy this part, uh, just being very careful that as I chop down, I'm staying away from the line, staying away from the line, each time just taking about half the distance to the bottom until I get close to the end. And I'm not gonna go all the way through the other side so that I can then come, come around and hit it from the other side. Uh, I find when going from the other side, it's much easier to do it with the bevel down and also the angle of attack is up so that I'm not uh, gonna be garring into the work. After the first piece is done, I can lay it on top of the second piece and then transfer all of these measurements and marks to the other piece so that these two then match uh, precisely. And then it's second verse, same as the first. Go through and cut them all out, and then I'll have two pieces with all these French, French cleat knockouts. Now on the fronts of all these verticals, I need to put um, intersections for where the horizontals will go. These horizontals are like an inch and a half, um, so I made marks up about three and three quarters, I think, was where they, uh, the average came out to. So they're about three and three quarters from top to the top of the next one. And then I can use the actual stick then to mark off the 
um, the size of the, the little notch I need to cut out. Then the next thing I can do is put these two together, transfer those marks from the side of that board up around to the front faces of it. And then just like with the French cleat knockouts, I can come in with a saw and cut down on each of these lines down to the depth mark. A fairly quick and, and simple process. Uh, and it, once you master this particular skill, I mean, you have dovetails down and everything else in that na nature. Uh, it's the exact same thing, just putting an angle in it for a dovetail. Then the uh, next thing you do is come in, chop out the waist, and uh, we're ready to put these horizontals into the slots that are created. A fairly quick and easy process, and it's kind of fun to make all this little joinery to make all these pieces intersect, and uh, I really enjoy it. The next thing I need to do is create the dowel location. There'll be a dowel running across for where the French cleats are, are not. Um, so I'm going to use that bevel gauge um, to put marks on so I know that I can put the dowel at the same place that the French cleats are, only where they're not. If that doesn't make much sense, I'm hoping it'll make more sense here in the moment. Uh, but I'll then drill through both of these pieces so that the dowel will run all the way across from one vertical to the other. And this dowel will be where the toe of all of the, um, the files and rasps will lock into. The next thing I need to do is create all of the horizontals. Uh, so I'm going to set aside the verticals for a moment. And in the back of all the horizontals, I have these little 3 8 dowels sticking out to separate all of the files and rasps. This way the files and rasps don't touch each other and they're not going to fall over in the rack. Uh, unfortunately, I had to cut... I think it was uh, 270 of these, something like that. It was a ridiculous number, and it took quite a while to cut them all out, and I thought I was past most of the work until I realized, wait a second, I have to drill all the holes for these to go in. So to lay out all the holes for these, um, I'm using a marking gauge to mark in on the back of each of these sticks, uh, about a half inch in, and then I can come in with the square and make a crossing mark um, and I put these marks at, I think it was an inch and three quarters apart. Uh, so that there's an inch and three quarters from center to center on all the dowels. Now that I have all of these marks laid out, then we can go and drill all of these holes. <laughs> so to make it a little bit easier, I clamp them all up on the bench um, in the, the two rows of dog holes. And then slowly went to town um, drilling out all these holes. Uh, and if you want to talk about a boring process, <laughs> this this was. It uh, took um, quite a bit longer than I wanted. Putting a flag on the end allows it so that each one of these holes go in, um, but the tip of the screw does not poke out the other side. And that way I have them all the same. And holy cow, that was a lot of holes. <laughs> yeah, but now we can start installing all the dowels. And to do this, I just keep them in the same rack, um, add a little bit of glue into each hole, and then apply the dowels. This actually went a lot faster than, it would, than I was expecting, especially after all the time spent cutting all these dowels and drilling all the holes. Uh, but after putting all the dowels in, I can come in with a mallet, tap them all in, and make sure that they are sunk completely. And I was very happy. This, this actually went fairly fast and was rather enjoyable. And uh, a lot of work in these eight boards, but uh, well worth it. Now we can go on to the assembly. So with the verticals, I need to put those four dowels running across. And the toes of all of the files and rasps will either hit a French cleat or a dowel, and it'll be every other one. So I'm going to add some glue to the verticals and then pound in the dowels um, into either side of the rack. This then allows the rack to basically, well, become one unit. The next thing I need to do is put in the horizontals that will run from side to side. And these will be put in with all of those dowels facing towards the back, or down in this case. And here you can see how tight I made all these joints. I really wanted them to, to squeeze into place and uh, really create a nice tight fit. So the glue isn't doing that much, and the dowel in the future I'm, I'm adding in won't do that much. But here you can kind of see how it all come together, how the files are all divided by these dowels. And when they slide in, the horizontals will then keep the dowels in place or keep the files in place. <laughs> then the last thing I'm going to do is drill and install dowels into the intersection of each of these just to hold them in place and uh, kind of save my own thought, making sure they're not going to pop out in the future. And uh, then we're on to the finishing steps. It is all finished and all there. We just need to smooth it all out. 
I can cut off all the dowels with a flush cut saw. I really love these saws, uh, especially these ones, uh, the really flexible, really thin. They do a great, great job of smoothing things out. Then we can come in with the plane, smooth down the dowel as well as any markings on the face and give it a really nice clean surface all the way across. And I, I love this part when you can uh, bring everything into the same plane, cleaning out dowels or cleaning off dovetail joints. This is very, very enjoyable. Then on to finish, and I'm going to make a lot of people happy here. I'm not just going to use my hand, I'm going to use a sock. <laughs> I'm doing this mostly because this project has a lot of little ins and outs and dowels and corners and joints, and sometimes your fingers can't always get back into those, whereas you can push a sock back into those joints and uh, get to all the spots that you want to. I'm going to be doing a boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish like I do on all of my tools and uh, all the, the racks hanging up behind me. And then we can start filling this thing, hanging up and uh, playing with it. And you can see how this one hangs from the front as opposed to sliding in from the sides like the last rack I made. And then everything can then fit into the slots. Um, I really like how it filled up the space and it's using every little bit of the shop and uh, becoming very functional. On the top I'm putting all of my screwdrivers and standard on one side and Phillips on the other. And then I can start to put in all of the files and organize them by type, by size, by shape and have them all in a way that makes sense to me so I can very quickly turn around and find that precise file that I want. And they fit everything from the very large standard files all the way up to the small needle files on the top. I was very pleased to find out that everything actually fit in there very well, even the little ones I wasn't quite sure if they would. Uh, there's the rack, it's all done, and I am very happy. Looking forward to using this for a long time to come. So there you have it. Um, this is a just a kind of a cool rack for me. Um, it was kind of a fun one to think through. I went through a whole bunch of different design ideas uh, from magnets and sleeves and more like the, the chisel rack and all sorts of other ideas of how do you hold files and rasps. And this is what I came up with. Now I know a lot of people are going to be saying, you know, these are going to be rubbing up the, the, uh, the rails and the, the track underneath and eventually they're going to wear through it. Uh, yeah, probably eventually they would, um, but I'm probably only going to have this shop for the next eight to ten years and it's going to take a lot longer than that to rub through these. So uh, yes, uh, the, it is a kind of temporary. It'll last 10, 15, 20 years or more. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'll take another half a day and build a new one. Uh, they're really not that hard to make, and I really like how simple and easy it is, and that's why I chose to use this particular design. So I hope you like this. It was kind of a, a fun experiment. Now that I have the entire shop done, I'm looking forward to actually starting in on some furniture builds. So next we're actually working on a little side table, and I'm looking forward to jumping into that. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon, you guys, especially for the patience you've shown with me trying to build out this shop. I'm looking forward Forward to getting back into some builds um, and I do want to say thank you to you guys because you are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to find out with Patreon or help out that, that is really what I put into making this channel grow and uh, being able to put out new content is because of you guys on Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about that or help out, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today and until next time, have a wonderful day.